Welcome to No Place Like Home, the radio show, coming to you on WRXB 1590 AM and Pinellas County Connection TV. This program is presented to you as an opportunity to hear information that can help you fulfill the dream of owning your very own home. We also share information about upcoming special events and programs to help you enjoy the good life in Pinellas County, as well as other items of interest. The sponsor of this program is the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County, which offers the first-time homebuyer program. I'm Carmen Lemberg, alongside Jane Merlin, your host for today's show. Good morning, Jane. I am so excited about this show this morning. Um, Being here with both of you is really great, and I'm anxious to hear about everything. Yes, you know, we're going to be talking about a relatively new program for the county. It's actually a pilot program, and it's the Family Housing Assistance Program. And we've got a great friend of the HFA radio show who's going to be joining us, and we'll introduce her in a little bit. But it's such an exciting program, and it's really helping to lift people up. And we'll learn more in just a few minutes. But uh, before we introduce our guest, I know you've got an update from our sponsor. Thank you, Jane. The Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County is offering the First Time Home Buyers Program, your key to home ownership, helping people in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties make the dreams of owning their own home a reality. The First Time Home Buyers Program is for individuals who have never owned a home, have not owned a home in the last three years, or veterans. The HFA offers a low rate on its 30 year fixed rate mortgage. Mortgage. And if you need a little help with down payment and closing costs, we can help you with that. To get your key to home ownership, go to www.pinellascounty.org forward slash HFA as in Housing Finance Authority. For more information or comments about the show, you can call us at 727 223 6419 or email us at newhome at pinellashfa.com. Jane? Thank you, Carmen. And what a great program. And one of the things I think I like the most is the fact that everybody that participates in the program does have to take a home buyer education class. You know, it actually helps. It helps them understand not only the process they're about to embark on, but understanding how to take care of your home and what it means to be a homeowner and setting up budgets. And it's really <coughs> wonderful. And it's a free class. That's the best part. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, I know that you've been able to help a lot of homeowners who just didn't quite have the down payment needed to get the house. They could do the monthly payment, but but, uh, couldn't come up with everything needed for the down payment or the closing cost. That's, you know, that's what's unique about our program is, is the only blockage these people have to owning their home is that usually the three and a half percent down payment that they need and we do that um you know at a very affordable rate for them over a long term and it just works out great well again uh, a great program for those who are thinking about home ownership uh do take advantage of it because you do have the great rates and the financial assistance and I hope more people give us a call. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Well, today's guest is joining us to discuss a program that's helping families overcome obstacles and improve their ability to secure housing. Armanda Lampley has been with Pinellas County for the past 16 years and has more than 23 years experience in neighborhood planning efforts that include neighborhood revitalization and redevelopment strategies, facilitating community input on county projects, and oversight of neighborhood improvement projects. She's the manager of the Family Housing Assistance Program, or FHAP, which is a county pilot that began serving homeless families with minor children in July of 2014. Armanda has a Bachelor of Science degree in business management from Florida State University in Tallahassee, Florida. Welcome to No Place Like Home, Armanda. Well, thank you so much, and please excuse me. I seem to have a tickle in my throat. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Well, we all get those now and again, so that is certainly not a problem. We are just so delighted that you're here and are going to tell us all about this pilot program that you all have been working on since 2014, I believe. And uh, why don't you start by giving us a brief overview of the FHAP program? Well, first of all, Jane, thank you so much. And Carmen, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Our pleasure. We're really excited about this program. Uh, You're right, we started in July of last year. So it's been about 15 months now that we've been in in operation. And the program is one where we help homeless families with minor children 
that are working a minimum of 14, uh, 25 hours per week. We feel that um, it is a small niche of families that we're helping, but it's a niche of families that we really do feel like are ready to experience this kind of support and go through this type of program. They've already acknowledged that they're ready and they're doing some things on their own by working. So a minimum of 25 hours a week is a requirement. So um, we come in and we help those families. They're required to save a certain percentage of their income um, uh, depending on their debt or depending on how much they make. That's one of the program requirements. Another requirement is that the families attend financial literacy classes. Mm. This is really, really important because some of these families have not ever been exposed to budgeting or any type of financial supports to help them understand um, what it takes to even stay in a home or apartment. So we think this is a very important component of the program. Also, the case managers that work with families on a regular basis, uh, on a monthly basis, they work with families on their budgets. Those are changing constantly, but it's important to revisit those budgets as we work with families throughout the program. So essentially, we help families get into housing and to help with connecting them with other resources in the community to continue to stabilize them. Wow. Well, th this is a really comprehensive approach because it's not just finding housing for people who are homeless or on the verge of homelessness, perhaps. Mm -hmm but um, really working with them. And it, and it sounds like they're very motivated to be in the program. Absolutely. Um, that's why I say it's a, it's a small niche of families, but those families are ones that are uh, motivated or really ready. I think it, readiness is really a key word for the families that have come through the program and are in the program and are really ready to work, ready to put the work in and not just a handout, but use this as a hand up to getting better and getting to the next level of stabilization for their entire families. Well, I'm quite sure that the the people who are coming into the program initially, you know, when they first walk through the door, so to speak, they must be in such an emotional state. And I wonder how you help them work through that part of the process. I, I agree. And and it may not look like on the outside that there are some emotional um, feelings going on or there are some trauma even as these families come, come to us for assistance. So I think over time, we really do the case managers that work with families really help with that emotional aspect of it. They put in place, because what our program is, is a system. It's a system for families to be able to move a little bit closer to stabilization. And so as um, case managers work with families over time, I believe as you build that relationship with the family, they begin to trust you a little more. And as you build trust through that relationship, you begin to um, help with emotional feelings that families have inside that you're not aware of when they first walk in the door. So the relationship with the case manager and all the program components is really key in helping a family to get further along that line of stabilization. So emotionally, it's the relationship that a case manager has with the family. And as they work through different components of challenges that they may have um, throughout the program stay. And that may take a little bit of time, too, to develop that trust, because I'm, I'm sure that some people may have um, a little bit of not only frustration, but perhaps some embarrassment about the situation that they're in. And um, and they are trying to improve their situation and, and, and provide a good, stable home for the children mm -hmm. that are involved. So I'm quite sure that it, that it does take a little bit for the case managers to be able to perhaps open some of the doors that, that may be closed when they Absolutely. first Absolutely. I, I totally agree, Jane. It does take time. Um, one of the lessons learned, we did a few of those, um, it is that you we realize that it takes time to build that trust. 
um, initially we've had some partnerships, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And one of the things that we were really excited about is to introduce uh, families to an opportunity to get um, short-term certification programs to be able to help them a little bit further along on that journey. Um, but what we found is it that wasn't one of the first components that you saw families run to or start to do um, because it was another piece of time that it takes out of a family's day to be able to do that. So um, it's a challenge. You know, you're trying to make more money or you're working a lot of hours because you are in a low paying job. You're trying to get children in school and trying to adjust to after school. So it really is a lot. And in the beginning, I think families come in and they don't have a lot of confidence. We have seen as families get closer to a year mark, then you see them asking for um, help and assistance in trying to get into school and get into some of those programs. So in the beginning, it's a lot coming in to the program that families are just faced with um, because they have so many other things that they're faced with in their personal lives that they're trying to adjust to. So to be a part of a system of a program adds to that. So case managers are really being diligent and patient with families to help them understand we're here to help, Mm -hmm. not to hurt, and we're not here to burden, but to give you um, some insight into how to move a little bit closer to where you want to be. And as you were just talking that some of your families, you know, are coming up on a year and stuff, and I know it's a pilot program, Mm -hmm. how long, I mean, how long of the process do you think it is and how much does that you know I'm sure there's a lot of variation from family to family Mm -hmm. the program is initially started out as an 18 month program Mm -hmm. and so we are assisting those families financially for approximately 12 of those 18 months Um, and then after that it is kind of a light touch case management to assist those families, checking in with them to make sure that they're remaining housed. If they have not um, started any schooling, you know, continue to encourage them in that manner, help them with those connections. Um, As far as the timing, since it's a pilot program, I think each family is individual. Um, No one family gets to the same point at the same time. It really is a dynamic where it's like personality. Uh, we all have different personalities. We all have different gifts. Um, and it just takes each family their own timing. You're giving them the same information, but it takes um, a little um, a different timing for each one of the families. Each one uses mm-hmm. the information mm-hmm. just a little bit Yes, it's just a little bit different. We're partnering with you to help you and give you the information, it is totally up to the family to decide that they're going to use that. About how many families have you helped so far? So far, we have um, housed 69 total families um, in the program, and that equates to about 244 individuals, with 81 of those being adults and 163 being children. So we're excited about being able to stabilize families in that manner. Can you give us an example of how you've helped a family? Um, That is one of the major components is is exactly that, housing a family. Uh, We have one of our case managers that assign um, the task and duties of being a housing specialist. And in that, uh, as part of those duties, um, what he does is he goes out and he recruits landlords or property management companies um, and tell them about our program and tell them that we're assisting homeless families with minor children and we're trying to get them housed. And you really do have to recruit um, because some of our families come with um, challenges. Um, They have previous evictions. Um, Some of them have low pain Um, work that they are involved in. Um, So landlords 
although they want to assist, the bottom line is um, they have to make money too. And so we have to um, convince them that they have case managers that will be working with families, coming alongside them to assist in as they move through the journey of that um, that year that they're actually with them because it's a, a lease that they're signing between the landlord and the family. It's not between the county and the landlord. It's really a lease, a normal lease that they sign uh, with the families themselves. So if there's a problem on the property or something with the landlord, maybe clue the case manager into there's something going on? Absolutely. That's one of the selling points is that you will have a liaison between the family and the landlord to be able to assist when there are issues. So we pay for all the upfront costs for families to get into that housing, whether it is a house or an apartment. We also have what we call a step-down process where families, we help with a portion of that rent through the through the 12-month period. Um, what we do is we try to help the family get adjusted to paying on their own so that at the end of the 12 months, it's not a surprise. You know, they've slowly adjusted to getting back into um, paying uh, on their own for that for those those costs. So our the major component is really helping families get connected to housing, helping them financially get into those houses, and then through that process, through the um, uh, year process, you're helping them connect to other resources in the community. Wonderful. Well, let's take a moment and talk about some of the other resources in the community that you do provide, because I'm quite sure that this, this is the kind of program and the, the kind of an approach that you certainly can't do at all. Absolutely. And, and so tell us about some of the outreach that you all have been able to do to get some of the community support. One of the major outreaches that we've been able to uh, connect to and really help with the support of this program, and it is through housing. Again, another key component of what this program is about but to add a connector through um, with the Pinellas County Housing Authority has been absolutely amazing. Um, we've been able to work with the Housing Authority to, if our families are successful in following through the um, components of the program, um, working their budget with, the fa- with their case managers, um, doing their savings, and um, going through the financial literacy program, we were be- we've been able to uh, apply for our families for a housing choice voucher. And those families have been able to, some of our families have been able to secure a housing choice voucher. So that's one of the key partners that we have. Another partnership that we have had is, is partnering with those agencies that provide the financial literacy courses for our families. We've partnered with um, Neighborhood Home Solutions in South County um, for our families that live south of Almerton Road. Uh, we partner with Bright Communities Trust um, for families in North County, and also the RC Gra- RCS Grace House has a program um, that we uh, work with our families, building strong families. Um, another a partner that we have that we're working with financial literacy is um, the um, Community Service Foundation. We have had at least one of our families that have gone through that program, the financial literacy portion of it. But we're so excited about that they continue with their first-time home buyers program. So those are um, very important um, um, partners that we have that we've connected our families with. They help them financially become stronger as they learn what the numbers piece of staying housed means to mean to them. So you actually worked with a family that is now looking at becoming a first-time home buyer. Yes, actually we have at least three because another partner that we've connected with is Habitat for Humanity. And we had four of our families that uh, increased their income enough to be able to be pre-qualified income-wise to get into the Habitat for Humanity. So they got a little certificate and it was like, you know, 
just so exciting. You got goosebumps just okay. knowing that you had families that were homeless that are now connected to an organization such as Habitat for Humanity. So two of those four families have followed through, and they're now working closely with Habitat's uh, financial uh, person to help them get their credit even further along towards that long-term goal of being a homeowner. So we're really excited about that. Oh, that is exciting. That that is wonderful, <laughs> wonderful news. Wonderful, absolutely. It's yeah. um, um, that's the thing that we get to just feel good about is connecting our families that are ready, and and not all of them are ready right now, and maybe later down the road. But there are some. Again, we talked about each family is different. Um, we had families that started around the same time, but th- th- some of them exceed a little bit more, and they're ready to make that leap. They make the decision on their own, like this young lady who continued with the Community Service Foundation. The next step after her financial literacy, she continued with uh, um, the home, first-time home buyers program. Just recently, one of the case managers told me in South County with neighborhood uh, home Solutions, they did one of his families that's been in the program less than three months, finished the financial literacy program with Neighborhood Home Solutions, and now they're taking their first-time home buyer pro- class. So um, it's exciting to be a part of families in their journey to stabilize even further, and some of them really even increasing their economic self-sufficiency component of the program a little bit stronger. Oh, that's great. Now, are you still looking for more partners to add to the program? Um, I think right now the biggest um, partnership that we could have with families is seeking to um, some kind of a partnership even further with um, like St. Pete Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have, I say, a partnership with Clearwater Housing Authority because some of our families um, have uh, achieved obtaining um, housing choice vouchers through the Clearwater Housing Authority as well. We don't um, submit applications like we do to the Pinellas County Housing Authority, but when those uh, registries come open for the Clearwater and the St. Pete Housing Authority, we encourage our families to apply for those registries, and sometimes we assist them with those application processes. So it's, I think, um, very important for us to um, be connected to any of the housing authorities and and also with HFA um, when there are units being built um, through the Housing Finance Authority. We've had discussions with the HFA about potentially having some of our families have some units set aside. So any um, organization that's working with um, housing, we're trying to make sure that we connect with those agencies to be able to secure housing in the future for our families. Because it's very difficult um, across the country, not just here in Pinellas County, Um, to find decent, affordable housing for our families. So that's the important piece uh, for our housing specialists is continue to um, seek resources and connect families um, through our connections in um, securing decent and affordable housing. Wonderful. Now, for those that are tuning in today that might be interested in this program or just hearing about it for the first time, who can they call for FHAP assistance? Uh, Right now, we are uh, accepting calls and applications through our Clearwater and St. Petersburg offices. Our Clearwater office is 464-8400, and the St. Pete office is 582-7781. You call those um, numbers, and they'll connect you with our FHAP case managers. So when, when they call and speak to an FHAP uh, case manager, what should they expect? What they'll expect is the case manager will, will tell them and give them an overview of the program. 
um, tell them the guidelines that you do need to be working. You do need to have a minor child um, in in the home that you're taking care of. And that is the, the key components of you know, the start of whether you qualify for the program is knowing those two things, that you're working a minimum of 25 hours per week and that you have a, a minor child in the in, in the home. And so then you will get an application to fill out. Now, we do accept uh, applications um, that are not direct referrals from another agencies. Uh, that's where we get predominantly most of our uh, referrals is from other outside agencies because um, those agencies work with families already mm -hmm. and they know which families are really ready for programs such as ours. And I know that uh, another thing we should probably mention for some of the landlords that might be listening right now is a great resource for them. And I, and I think that you all use this is the FloridaHousingSearch.org. Tell us a little bit about that group. Yes, we do u utilize uh, uh, FloridaHousingSearch.org because um, it's a key area that we can use to point our families to housing. Um, not only... Um, does the housing specialist go out and look for housing for our families? We encourage our families to do so as well. So our families use that um, that tool to find housing, and so it's an important piece for us to use as well. And I think, don't you all actually take a look at the properties before the families move into them? Yes. Thank you, Jane, for reminding me of that. Um, that's a key component as well. We have an inspector that we use. We partner with the Planning and Community Development Department, and they have an inspector um, that goes out and they set up appointments and they inspect the housing according to the uh, HUD standards for housing. And we don't let our families move in until those houses pass that inspection. And it's very important because you want to make sure that families are getting into decent and exactly. safe housing. And, and the whole key is to develop the sustainability. And um, it's important, as you say, to make sure that they are getting into a, a well-inspected home and one that's going to serve them well while they're there. Yes, absolutely. Because you can get into a home but that home could be a money pit for you because it has things, have things that you've not inspected and it could cost like electricity and water. So it's important to get our families into homes that, that will not cost them above the, the, the standard of being in a home or, a, or an apartment. And once they get to the point, because housing is so key to survival, literally. If you don't have housing, you spend all your energy and effort trying to get housed mm -hmm. and then get food. And so getting them stable just right there can help a family so much because that's one big thing they don't have to worry about. They've got a roof over their head. They're safer. Now they can start worrying about more things that they need to direct their attention to Absolutely. is just Absolutely. so you're, wonderful you're, you're that you're right, there. Carmen. Um, one of our partners that I did miss that we have a lot of our families placed into their apartment complexes is Chaff Properties. Oh, it's been yeah. a long-term uh, partner with the county, and uh, we have a few of our families that are placed in their properties. They've been another great partner in the landlord property management component of the program. They have some great properties. Yes, they are. Look, we are unfortunately out of time. I know that we could talk a lot more about the, the program and the great success that you're having. Uh, it is a pilot program, but it seems like already you've been able to help hundreds of people uh, and, and children become more stably housed. Yes. So congratulations. Thank you on so that. much. And thank you so much, both Jane and Carmen, for having us, having me here on the program to talk about the Family Housing Assistance Pilot Program for the county. We hope you'll come back another time and give us updates. Oh, thank you. I love to do that. Thanks so much for listening to us on WRXB 1590 AM and Pinellas County Connection TV. We look forward to having you join us next month. And remember, if you've missed any part of this show or would like to view past shows, you can check out the website or YouTube. I'm Jane Merlin. And I'm Carmen Lemberg. Thanks for tuning in. Make it a great day.